Here's Dr. Mary Vernon, and I included her here because for a very important message, and that is that if you're going to make any lifestyle change, you ought to get a medical check checkup first, and you ought to review all the lifestyle changes that you're going to make, the exercise routine and and uh, the water and the beverages that you're going to drink, including alcohol consumption, uh, with a doctor. And if you get a medical exam and a consultation before you start, uh, before you start a lifestyle change, that can be very good. Now, it's especially true, especially true if you're on any medications for a chronic disease. <clears throat> you don't want to be fiddling around with medications by changing your lifestyle. And uh, the doctor can monitor the progress and change the medication or the dosages uh, as necessary. Um, now, Dr. Vernon will be the first to say that a lot of her patients have completely cured diabetes and eliminated their medicines. Uh, high blood pressure, diabetes, a lot of these chronic diseases, if you have them already, you can cure them, you can eradicate them, and you can get off all the medications. Uh, but you want to do this under a doctor's care, and you want, to, you want to be with a doctor that understands these concepts of, of a, how a healthy lifestyle uh, is the best medicine, and how a healthy lifestyle uh, can be uh, the first choice uh, rather than uh, medications that just try to do some sort of a patchwork, uh, a patchwork effort on this or that condition, rather than going to the underlying uh, reason for all that. And there's a new word for all this, uh, and it's called uh, functional medicine. Uh, there's another doctor who really talks about functional medicine. I'll have to remember it uh, as soon as I uh, get to his uh, slide. <coughs> Um, now here is a, here's the video by Dr. Robert Lustig where he defines fructose, refined, refined fructose. Uh, that, is, that is fructose that's coming from corn. Now he's not uh, worried about fruits and vegetables in their natural and whole state. Uh, he's worried about refined factory made uh, fructose coming from white table sugar or sucrose they call that or from high fructose corn syrup. <clears throat> now he believes that fructose, refined fructose, is a leading cause of uh, fatty liver disease. He thinks it's toxic to the liver and toxic to the body. He believes that it causes high blood pressure, high uric acid levels, obesity, insulin resistance, and leptin resistance. That's your fat cells <clears throat> signaling to your brain that you uh, are regulating your energy stores and your need for energy and your use of energy. <clears throat> He thinks that leptin resistance causes the brain to think that the brain itself and the rest of the body are starving, which in turn causes us uh, an increased appetite and cravings and the ingestion of more foods that make us overweight. So a very simple message from Dr. Lustig is get rid of all refined uh, fructose. Uh, I mentioned earlier in our discussion about how to prevent um, uh, how to prevent heart disease and take care of uh, prevent high blood pressure that uh, we need to focus on we, we need to focus on the relationship between triglycerides which is running off the screen here sorry triglycerides and HDL and that ratio, 
In other words, if your triglycerides are high, if your triglycerides are high, you know that your liver has been madly making these lipoproteins and filling them up with fat, filling them up with fat and sending them off into the bloodstream, uh, filling them up with triglycerides, I should say, and, and cholesterols. And uh, if you have elevated, if you have elevated levels of triglycerides in your body, uh, then you know also that you have small particles of cholesterol that are running around that are probably oxidized. The longer these little cholesterol particles are running around the bloodstream, the easier it is for them to get in between in between the epithelial cells, that's a in between there, the, that's a cell and that's a cell over here. And uh, anyway, these, these oxidized particles get inside and create an inflammatory response. So Dr. Lustig has a very simple way to determine without going to the expense of what you know, are these big particles or small particles that are putting you at risk of, of making these plaques inside here? And so he says very simply, if your triglycerides are high and your HDL is low, then you can, you can pretty much bet that you have these tiny little particles of oxidized cholesterol running around your bloodstream. On the other hand, if your triglycerides are low and your HDL, the good cholesterol, is high, let's say it's a one-to-one, -one, or maybe you even have higher levels of HDL than you have of, of, uh, of triglycerides, um, uh, less than one-to-one. -one. I'm talking about less triglycerides, less than one uh, to to one of HDL. Then you have, uh, you have particles that are probably uh, larger and unable, they're actually unable to fit in between the cracks between the epithelial cells. So that means that these particles are just merely just traveling through the bloodstream without getting caught or sucked down into uh, inside your epithelial lining of your blood vessels. So that's kind of why a lot of doctors are starting to, uh, they're, they're starting to ignore uh, uh, the, the, this, uh, these cholesterol numbers uh, in favor of what are the triglycerides levels in your body and what are the HDL levels in your body because if you can get that down to a one-to-one, -one, uh, it just uh, gives other indications of what's going on in your whole metabolism. Uh, it, it gives them, it, these other indications are, are more powerful in terms of, redu or of assessing the risk of plaques and heart attack and, and uh, heart failure. <clears throat> so uh, Dr. Lustig, um, th this whole uh, this whole metabolic path was worked out only, I guess, in the last ten years uh, um, about how sugar and specifically fructose is metabolized in the liver uh, as a poison. And then, by the way, this fructose that's metabolized, the way the liver gets rid of it is by making what, Courtney? Making that. That's that's a lipoprotein. So it, it's making a lot of those. So if you make a lot of those and send that out in the blood, uh, then you have uh, elevated uh, triglycerides. That's the point. This is uh, Dr. Richard Johnson, and he's being interviewed in this video by Dr. Mercola. 
And uh, uh, just as Dr. Lustig uh, believes, Dr. Johnson thinks that these added, uh, added fructose, now again, it's added fructose, not the, not the naturally occurring fructose that you'll find in, in uh, fruits. Uh, but anyway, the added fructose, table sugar and high fructose corn syrups and other names that probably have uh, other chemicals that have fructose inside of them, uh, they cause uh, liver disease, oxidative stress, leptin resistance, abnormally high uric acid levels, and increased appetite. And he also believes that the body will even, will, will even make fructose in circumstances where we are insulin resistant. And uh, he also focuses on, on uh, the problems that we can have with our kidney. We haven't talked about the kidney much, in, in, uh, or at all, I guess, really, in this uh, presentation, except to think about the cell health of our kidney. But uh, remember, every cell has a mitochondria, and to the extent that, that uh, fructose is causing uh, problems in the liver, the liver cells have mitochondria, and those can become dysfunctional and uh, can create uh, uh, problems. And uh, uh, Dr. Johnson believes that added fructose can, can cause havoc with the kidney. Oh, he's also very famous for one uh, point that he's brought up. He thinks that added fructose turns on a fat switch uh, in the body that destroys uh, healthy metabolism. Uh, here's Dr. Mackey, Robert Mackey. We've, I've taken a couple of um, slides uh, from, from his video presentation, and he has a great discussion on, the, on what is insulin resistance and what causes it, and he focuses on the role of insulin uh, in terms of good health. And uh, uh, he thinks it's very important to understand insulin resistance and the value uh, what he believes is to be a whole foods diet. So very, uh, he's a very good speaker. I hope you have a chance to listen to him. Um, there's another doctor, uh, Carolyn Cedarquist, and uh, uh, she, she has a short video there on what she terms as the signs or the symptoms of insulin resistance. And she talks about uh, this, this whole notion of craving carbohydrates and this intense uh, hunger and getting uh, weak and shaky and uh, oh not so many years ago I could only swim for maybe 20 or 30 minutes before I would feel weak and shaky and I didn't know it but if I had watched her video three or four years ago I probably would have at least gotten an introduction to the whole concept of, of uh, insulin resistance. But I didn't know about it. <clears throat> um, she says that some of the signs of insulin resistance are uh, her patients complain that if they eat breakfast, they're hungry all day. And she says, well, why is that? Because uh, um, insulin is, is already elevated, and so everything that they're... Um, everything that they're eating is uh, unable to be metabolized properly. And she jokes that the hunger can be so intense uh, that she jokes that uh, she'll eat anything that doesn't eat her first, she says. Um, she's also a, a doctor that seems to focus on uh, metabolic issues related to uh, post-menopause uh, and morning sickness. So. I wanted to include her in this video just to kind of, um, you know, in case, Courtney, you had some friends that, that are uh, facing some of these uh, questions. Uh, here's a pharmacist, Brian Sandroff, uh, in my opinion, a wonderful speaker. Uh, wonderful speaker. He kind of reminds me of listening to uh, Ronald Coleman and some of this old movie and radio episodes. <clears throat> uh, Dr. Sandroff believes that 
Misinformation, misinformation is the main killer in, in, in America. And he thinks that controlling your insulin is the key to everything. The key to everything for good health. So please, Courtney, if, uh, uh, well, I'd like you to listen to doc, Dr. Esselstyn first. Uh, but up there on the, uh, I mean, everyone on this list, I hope you have a chance to listen to. Um, insulin and insulin resistance and glucose and all that, these concepts, like I said, if you hear them over and over again, uh, you start to under, really understand it. And then once you understand it, like I said, it's the holy grail. You'll really understand your metabolism and how you work and, and you'll be much better off. Ah, here's uh, Dr. Mark Hyman. And Dr. Mark Hyman was the one, the doctor I was thinking about in this whole definition of uh, what he refers to as uh, functional medicine. So he's trying to, uh, he's, he's focusing on the underlying function, what's going on in the body uh, to understand the medical condition that is presenting itself uh, uh, with his different uh, patients. So he wants to, he, he says you've got to uh, focus on the underlying causes of inflammation. Apparently inflammation and this immune response in the body, this chronic immune response, it not only leads to the plaques that we're talking about, but it, it leads to a loss of uh, hormone sensitivity and and receptor cells in that whole, that whole house, that fixer-upper type of cell that is uh, uh, <clears throat> not functioning properly. Uh, why? Because it's, it's probably uh, uh, inflamed on a chronic basis. In other words, it's not working properly and your body's trying to repair and everything that's going in there to repair it is probably be being oxidized by a poor lifestyle. Uh, Dr. Mark Hyman also says that you have to really focus on the glucose and the insulin levels, uh, eat whole and natural foods, and he's a very strong advocate of, of letting food be your medicine. Uh, somebody like Dr. Mark Hyman would be evaluating uh, just to understand what's causing the high blood pressure. Uh, is there a there are restrictions in the in the vessels. Are the vessels sticky, like trying to pump honey around? Trying to pump something sticky and heavy, uh, uh, like uh, honey, it's a lot more difficult than just normal blood, healthy blood, I should say. <clears throat> um, so, Dr. Mark Hyman is another person that uh, is very critical about all the processed foods and all the toxins that are driving obesity. And dis and uh, and obesity. I'm sorry, driving obesity and um, uh, diabetes. And he's come up with this current term. He calls it uh, diabesity. Uh, so anyway, he he has many suggestions in many of his videos on how to can, how to uh, prevent chronic diseases. And if you do have a chronic disease, how to reverse it. <clears throat> Uh, Dr. Jeffrey Garber is another doctor. He's there in, in, uh, in the, in the uh, mountain states, I believe it's Colorado, where, where he says that uh, insulin and elevated uh, levels of insulin caused by carbohydrates contributes to this whole notion of uh, inflammation. And he, he believes that inflammation is the cause of all these chronic diseases. He believes that inflammation causes heart disease. And uh, like we've said before, it's not cholesterol or saturated fat like you'd find in an egg yolk, but it's all these RCOs, these refined carbohydrates that are coming into the body, elevating uh, glucose, elevating fructose, causing your liver to madly manufacture all these lipoprotein particles that are full of fat, 
triglycerides coming from sugars, <laughs> sugars that in our sedentary lifestyle we are not using because our muscles are not out there hungry and gobbling up all the sugars in our blood. So anyway, uh, Dr. Gerber, he says he uses nutrition as medicine and he recommends a traditional whole foods unprocessed diet for all of his patients. Very good speaker. Here is Dr. Natasha, Natasha Campbell, Mc, Campbell McBride and she's the, uh, she's the one who started the, uh, the GAPS diet. And uh, she did this because she thinks that most autoimmune diseases are caused by problems with, uh, in our digestion, uh, problems with a leaky gut. Now, all of us, well, anyway, let me finish this first. She thinks that autoimmune diseases are caused by problems of, in the digestion, caused by a leaky gut, poor bacteria in the gut, and exposure to chemicals and, and processed foods and, and polluting substances that, uh, that are found in the foods that we eat. <clears throat> and uh, so she has a whole diet program where she uh, tries to repair the gut and then little by little starts introducing foods back into the diet. Uh, she believes in using whole raw milk, organic vegetables and fruit, grass-fed animals, meats, and, uh, and uh, whole uh, nuts and whole wheat. But in the GAPS diet, she has a whole plan of how this is all uh, introduced one by one so that you can repair all the damage that has been done. Now, what I started to say here is that all of us have uh, um, all of us uh, who have ever had added sugars and, and uh, 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 chemicals and things in our, in our food supply, we all have a leaky gut to some extent. What I mean by that is the cells, the cells are, are fixer-uppers in, uh, in the large intestines. Uh, so they're fixer-uppers in the sense that they're not working properly. They've been damaged. So um, we have to remember that we have to, to fix our, our whole digestive system uh, before we can go on to enjoy a good health. Well, good morning, Courtney. This is a continuation of my little birthday present to you, a video about a healthy lifestyle. And today we're going to start the discussion off with uh, reviewing some of the experts that I've highlighted. And we will talk about fats and cholesterol. The first expert I wanted to mention in this section is Brian, Dr. Brian Sandoroff, again, I've mentioned him before, but he has a wonderful lecture about fats, and he explains the difference between saturated and unsaturated fats. We've always heard of those terms, but we may not have really understood clearly uh, what they, what it means, what, the, what, the, what these terms mean, and how they uh, affect our health. One thing I wanted to mention before we uh, uh, review some of the other experts about uh, fats, and that is we want to distinguish between the fats that we eat and the fats that are in our blood. Remember that when we eat uh, fats, we uh, they go into the stomach and then they start getting uh, digested and enzymes start working on the fats and then the body uh, has to repackage all these fats because these molecules are so large they can't just 
uh, pass right through the gut, so to speak. So when we eat fats, oftentimes they're in the form of triglycerides, these uh, three molecule, uh, three, three chain molecule bodies. And Dr. Brian Sanderoff will explain all of, all of that and what all that means. And we'll explain this whole notion that we have to relearn or almost forget about in, uh, all the things that we have been taught over the last 30 or 40 years. A lot of what we thought was the correct diet has been filled with incorrect information. So remember to, to think in terms of two different environments. One, the fats that you're eating in your diet. And second, the environment of the fats that are in your bloodstream and what happens to those fats. And also, uh, don't forget, some of the fats that you eat never even make it into the bloodstream, never even make it into the body. Why is that? Because some of those fats are just carried right through with all the fiber that you eat. So that's a good thing in a way. Sometimes you can indulge and, and have some good healthy fats or maybe overdo it a little bit and, and you'll be comforted uh, t to know that at least a little bit of that fat uh, may just pass on through and your body won't have to uh, think about how you're going to use those fats as energy. Another thing to keep in mind as we review this section on fats is that there's a uh, fat fat and then there's sugar fat. So we have to remember that carbohydrates and especially refined carbohydrates those really are just little chains of pearls each pearl being some sort of a sugar and or at least a chain of glucose and uh, when we eat these uh, refined carbohydrates whether it's glucose or some of the refined carbohydrates like um, high fructose corn syrup or sucrose uh, these sugar molecules are converted into fat so there again you have to think of these two different these, these completely different notions of of fat that you eat or or now refined carbohydrates that you eat and the type of fats that are in your blood because remember the liver will start to take all this uh, sugar out of the blood and fructose refined fructose or fructose goes right to the liver so the liver will repackage these and turn this into energy stores, turn it into fats. So what we eat may or may not end up as a fat that we store on our body. <clears throat> and understanding what foods will do that and what foods won't really helps in terms of <clears throat> getting a healthy, balancing all your hormones, and, and uh, keeping you fit and firm. Another point to remember is that I've been talking all in all, uh, all, all along here about healthy fats versus rancid and oxidized refined fats. I've talked quite a bit about these industrial factory oils, which are rancid and oxidized, deodorized, and bleached, and all that. The healthy fats that may come from nuts or avocados, 
uh, fish, salmon, and sardines, something like that, or, or eggs, or other uh, dairy products. Uh, these are considered the healthy fats by many experts. So, as we go through this whole discussion about fats, you want to understand and keep in mind some of these factors. One of the most uh, remarkable videos in this whole list is presented by Dr. Scott Cleos, if that's how you pronounce his name. And uh, he's actually a radiologist uh, in Florida, I believe. And uh, normally he's working with patients uh, on how to, uh, with varicose veins and obesity and all that. And he said that um, if you can understand how we use and, and how we make triglycerides, you have a better chance of maintaining a healthy a balance. So he has this wonderful uh, graphic that he, that he presented in his video, and it's just amazing. This uh, top this top blue and gray with a couple of orange spots over here. Uh, what is what is that? Well, that's what I was talking about. That that free fatty acid a long time ago. That's that free fatty acid. And if you put three of those together, you have a triglyceride. And uh, a long, uh, when we started this video in the beginning, uh, we. I had your picture when you were about a year ago, uh, and uh, or over a year ago, I guess now. And um, you were holding up uh, several, what looked to be kind of a representation of some fats. Well, uh, those are that type of fat. Uh, that's the energy that we store in our body in the form of triglycerides in our fat cells. So, what's remarkable here is that, uh, now we store that in the form of triglycerides, TG. Triglycerides, there's three. One, two, three. Uh, three of what? Three of that, uh, three of that molecule. And Dr. Cleos, he gives the most wonderful explanation of uh, a, a very entertaining little chemistry uh, class and a class about physics and he and he kind of boils that down in just a few minutes and he's ex he explains uh, basically uh, why uh, these molecules form and how they form and then what I think is the best, and I had to include it in this uh, presentation to you, he compares that to uh, gasoline, the fuel that we put in the cars. And how about that, corn? What do you see here? You see, uh, that's what you store in your body, and this is what you put in your, your wonderful little antique car you drive around in. They look pretty close to me. It's just amazing. So, uh, that, that should really drive home this point that the fat that we store in our body and the fats that we eat, we really want to pick and choose and we want to understand that that's the body's way of storing energy. So, if your hormones are working properly and all your cells at the cell level are working properly, uh, you can be able to use all this energy that you're uh, taking in or you can even reduce the energy that you've stored up over the years. But I just wanted you to get a, it's kind of shocking really how, how closely 
this uh, gasoline uh, octane, they call it, molecule, looks to some of the fats that we store in our body. And that's why they kind of compare triglycerides to uh, fossil fuels like oil and uh, kerosene and, and jet fuel and all these things. So um, anyway, I commend uh, this video for your watching. It's very entertaining. The I, I mentioned a moment ago that everything we've learned in the last 30 or 40 years we have to unlearn and almost forget about it and relearn it. And Sally Fallon Morell addresses this whole issue in a video that she t entitles The Oiling of America. And what she does, she details the really one of the lowest points in American history that has affected the whole world. And that is the demonization of healthy fats and the elevation of these rancid and oxidized uh, free radical cocktails as the preferred food that, uh, that uh, we uh, were told to start eating and to um, so she goes into the how that how that happened and she gives a lot of data on how the how governmental authorities and uh, researchers and I suppose other interested bodies uh, really uh, uh, created what one doctor, Dr. George Mann, he has called it uh, one of the greatest health scams of the century. So anyway, Sally goes through a very wonderful explanation on how that all happened. Very helpful. Uh, for a somewhat uh, scientific and, and uh, from a researcher perspective, uh, here's a professor, Tracy Fulton, who's giving an overview of, of cholesterol and other fats that are found in the, in the blood. And I just want to point out the, uh, that, like we said before, a cholesterol is very important for many, many reasons in the body, but one reason to highlight in this slide that she presented was that if you can see these little uh, blue arrows, she's pointing to some cholesterol molecules. And this slide is met, meant to represent just a little tiny sliver of the membrane of a cell. In other words, the the the, uh, the the bag that that uh, can, uh, that is the cell and um, the nucleus and the mitochondria and everything else they're all inside, but the protective uh, pro protective membrane around the cell is composed of uh, uh, it includes these uh, phospholipids and cholesterol, and if cholesterol were not there. Uh, the, she says that the, that the membranes would not be able to hold their integrity. So that's why cholesterol is very important. And by the way, I might add that the, all the cell membranes, uh, they can be easily fooled by, by using building blocks from all these uh, rancid and oxidized omega-6 industrial factory oils. So you want to prevent them at all cost. Here's a little animation that I got off of uh, YouTube and you, uh, these uh, two pictures, you've seen those before. But uh, here's a little bit of a landscape, kind of a blow up, even of, uh, of a cell surface. And the surface of a cell is not, is not smooth like the skin of an apple. 
it is full of all kinds of, well, you can think of it like, uh, like uh, the, the surface of planet Earth with, with craters and trees and mountains and all kinds of structures that are on the outside of the membrane and that make up the membrane of a cell. So at a microscopic level, it's a very complicated structure and uh, uh, mankind is, is learning more and more and surprised more and more about how a cell uh, works and functions. But when I talk about the cellular level, you might keep a lot of these things in, in mind here because at a, at a tiny, tiny level, level like that, all of these structures have to be in good shape. This was actually a little animation showing what uh, HDL, the supposed good cholesterol, and LDL uh, cholesterol kind of uh, 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 kind of a kind of an artist uh, rendition of it, so to speak. There are a lot of entertaining animations like this on on YouTube. Uh, they explain how. Uh, what what uh, they explain about diabetes and high blood pressure and heart disease and oh it just goes on and on. This is just one of them. Any topic you're interested in, you just type in anim the word animation and and the next word of whatever you're trying to zero in on. Here's a uh, local person in the San Francisco Bay Area, uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Chris. Cresser, and uh, he also talks about uh, the causes of heart disease and and how that the uh, the whole cholesterol hypothesis was incorrect. That there's a lot more to the inquiry that you want to understand. He talks about the, uh, uh, the saturated fats and and how healthy. Uh, those are and how they should be a part of everyone's diet, everyone's diet, whether it's an animal or a vegetable or a plant source. And he also zeroes in on this whole notion of, of cholesterol uh, of particles and uh, triglyceride, the size of these, what they call these lipoprotein particles. If you remember one of the previous slides, slides by Dr. Peter Atia, he had a whole list of big, big uh, circles, and they were all these uh, uh, lipoproteins with an outer shell and with uh, an inner cargo. And whether you're talking about LDL or HDL or VLDL or even a chylomicron, these are all lipoproteins that have a, an outside shell and they have an inside cargo. And uh, uh, Chris Kressler, he zeroes in on the cause of heart disease, which in his opinion is caused by these uh, high numbers of these uh, lipoproteins that are circling around in the blood and how did they get there? More likely than not they came from all the uh, RCOs. From the RCOs because the liver is probably uh, madly making all these particles and more and more and more of them and uh, that then they find their way into the they find their way into the uh, arteries and start to form the inflammation. So he has a very good explanation of, of uh, in his opinion, how all that works. Here is Dr. Peter Atia, and along with many other doctors around the world who are who are rethinking this whole cholesterol, heart disease hypothesis, uh, he has, um, he goes into quite a bit of detail on how he believes that this high number of these lipoprotein, lipoprotein particles 
uh, all these uh, with their cargo of triglycerides and all that and, and the cholesterols that's what's really driving this whole heart disease so now that you've passed the age of 60 and you're starting to uh, uh, most women over the age of 60 become more at risk for a heart attack uh, so you want to try to understand this whole notion about the particle sizes and the the number of these particles in your blood now Dr. Atia believes that the the that the liver's uh, 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 when they make all these triglycerides that this is what's really driving heart disease because it drives up the number of all of these particles in the blood and it can be very um, arthrogenic as they say something like that in other words it can cause all these plaques not only in the blood but in the brain and all the other places that your blood vessels go um, here's a, another doctor who tried to explain some of this uh, it's, it's you hear it the first time you have to hear it over and over before it starts to really make sense Dr. Dayspring uh, he says that, uh, and he agrees with Dr. Atia, that half of the people, 50%, that have a normal cholesterol level, what they call the normal LDL level, uh, have a cardiovascular event without warning. In other words, you go to the doctor and the doctor says you're fine, you're normal, your cholesterol looks good and three days later you drop dead of a heart attack and usually the heart attack is the first and only warning. So uh, this whole notion of trying to understand the, the number of cholesterol uh, particles and their size uh, going back to Dr. Lustig's whole point, and that was that uh, refined fructose is also driving this formation of uh, uh, triglycerides and lipoproteins and the number, number of particles that are carrying uh, cholesterol. Uh, I tried to make kind of a a simple example or a simple kind of a drawing here this is not something that Dr. Uh, Dayspring did I I can take the the uh, what do you call it not the not the credit but the uh, this is my rendition of what uh, Dr. Atia and Dr. Dayspring and uh, Dr. Lustig are trying to uh, 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 warn us against and that is that when we eat a lot of refined carbohydrates and whatnot, we generate all of these uh, uh, lipoproteins. And so each car here is a uh, lipoprotein. And the cargo inside, the cargo inside, uh, I'm saying is, uh, I have a little cartoon there of uh, one person driving the car. Now let's say that the one person is this cargo of cholesterol and triglycerides. So uh, here you can count the number of cars that have this cargo, the, ni the number of lipoproteins, if you will. Uh, um, they can call these, um, uh, you, you can count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So there are 12 of these little um, vehicles, these little lipoprotein molecules 
And there may be thousands and thousands of these things in your blood, but I'm just trying to make an example. So let's say that you had a really healthy diet and a very healthy lifestyle, which includes the exercise and, and what you're con drinking and all that, all the beverages, and you didn't have 12 of these little, uh, little uh, 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 particles, in other words, a small size and many of them, but you just had a couple of uh, a big uh, jumbo particles, very large particles with a cargo inside. So this would be the cholesterol and triglycerides. But this is in just one vehicle, just in one vehicle. And the only cartoon I could find was a school bus, but I'm not trying to associate a school bus with a triglyceride, so to speak. But let's say that you just had one large one uh, and then uh, compared to 12. You may have the same number, you may have the same level of cholesterol and triglycerides and whatnot, uh, but now it's only in one vehicle. And, and if you have a couple of large ones that are traveling around in the bloodstream, they are uh, much less likely to be damaged and oxidized uh, than if you had all uh, a whole uh, uh, a whole group of smaller particles individually carrying the same amount of cholesterol. So uh, it's these small little lipoproteins that can get inside of the that can get inside of the epithelial lining. It's all these little small ones and, and high numbers of them. In other words, the whole risk goes up. The whole risk goes up. So it's not the total cholesterol. The total cholesterol here, you could think of as being equal. This, the cholesterol in this lipoprotein is equal to the cholesterol in that. But having all the cholesterol and all these numbers huge number of particles and a small size particles greatly increases the risk. And again, as Dr. Lustig and Dr. Atia and uh, Dr. Dayspring point out in their, in their videos, if you look at this relationship between the triglycerides and the HDL in your blood, so what you want is a very low level of triglycerides and you want a very healthy high level <laughs> sinking down here uh, you want a very high level of the HDL the supposed good cholesterol so uh, I hope that tries to uh, shed some light on this whole notion of the amount of cholesterol in your blood uh, versus the more detailed information about the the packages that this cholesterol is in, the number of those packages, and the size of those packages, and how they have, um, uh, how the new science and the new thinking on all of this is shedding more and more light on how we can reduce or eliminate, as Dr. Esselstyn says, the risk of a heart attack. Uh, Chris Kressler, he, uh, he also believes that uh, oxidative stress and, and uh, oxidative stress caused by uh, free radicals in the body are a big factor in whether we have a healthy uh, future or not. Uh, he says that uh, the level of oxidative stress that you have in your body can predict, predict a cardiovascular event uh, practically 80% of the time. And uh, he, he, uh, he highlights a number of the problems with all these uh, commercial factory industrial oils as well. So I think at this point, uh, you know to avoid all of those in, in all of the products, wherever you go. 
Now, no discussion of, uh, of heart disease and cholesterol uh, can be presented without having some discussion about the, about the statins. Statins have become, are a drug that is given to people to lower their cholesterol. Statins, I, I've, been, I've heard, uh, uh, as a class of drugs, uh, is the largest market, the, 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 uh, the highest pr producing revenue producing drug in the world, in the history of medicine. So it's everywhere, and, they're, and doctors are following these guidelines, and they're being asked to give it to more and more people. So, uh, I, what I wanted to do is uh, highlight a couple of experts uh, that, that have various opinions about statins. Uh, let me start off with uh, Dr. Sunny uh, Srivastava um, and Dr. Seth Bilazarian. Not sure how to pronounce their name, sorry. And uh, they show that, or uh, they believe that statins may be appropriate to reduce high levels of cholesterol for those who cannot or will not or won't reduce their risk factors uh, with uh, changes in their lifestyle. And uh, they, both of them believe that the statins are some of the safest drugs on the market today and that they don't have too many short-term risks. And uh, they also point out that many cardiologists believe the same thing and many of them take statins themselves. Uh, they uh, go into some discussion about whether or not statins are appropriate even to give to young people and as we've previously said uh, plaques are showing up in younger and younger uh, uh, children and teenagers and uh, even in those cases they say it may be appropriate to start statins at a younger age. Now both of them would prefer that their patient change their lifestyle but if the patient is unwilling or can't change the lifestyle or just won't, then they, these two doctors at least, uh, believe that statins is, is an option that should be explored. And they, uh, they think that that's better than letting the patient go and uh, getting a, a, a cardiovascular event in the future because of high cholesterol. Now another doctor that uh, he has a, a different opinion about this uh, would be um, Dr. Stephen Sinatra and he does believe that statins can be helpful if properly used and he says that he says that you don't want to just use statins willy-nilly because cholesterol is very important and essential for health, as, as we've seen. However, he's, uh, he, he's very quick to say that if you're going to use statins, you have to do this whole notion of particle size and particle number, and you have to, what he calls, uh, fractionate, fractionate the cholesterols and, that, are, that are found in these lipoproteins that are found and whatnot in the body, and that uh, you have to. You want to be very careful. He just in his video he discusses the pros and cons of statins, and he um, he he says that uh, uh, if that his preference would be that if you want to reduce your risk of a heart attack, that you follow the uh, what he refers to as the Asian modification of the famous. Uh, a Mediterranean diet and uh, he goes uh, he explains all the problems with sugar 
and RC, uh, he doesn't call them RCOs, but I do. And he highlights stress that can, uh, chronic stress that can elevate and, and wreak havoc with your, um, your metabolic uh, function. And he also is very quick to point out that exercise uh, can be very beneficial. So it's a good overview of, of uh, um, uh, when and when not to use uh, statins. And uh, I would put him in the super cautious uh, category on, on the type of people that he would prescribe uh, statin drugs. There's another uh, a lady on the... Um, uh, she comes out of, uh, I think it's MIT, I believe. Uh, she's, she's, a, uh, uh, she's a doctor of uh, PhD in research, and she is at the other end of the spectrum on this whole statin question, and she believes that they are destructive and have many horrible side effects, and she believes that heart disease in many respects is caused by a deficiency, a deficiency of cholesterol. So here you have some doctors that want to prescribe uh, statins to reduce the cholesterol number and you have somebody like um, uh, Dr. Stephanie uh, Seneff, uh, if that's how you pronounce her name, Seneff, uh, who believe that statins do nothing more than make you old before your time, or as she puts it, grow older faster. Uh, she has a, a, a fascinating discussion about the, the importance of getting uh, vitamin D from sunlight and, uh, and making sure that you have uh, good quality cholesterol in your body. And she believes that um, that uh, that there are forms of cholesterol that are very protective, very protective against heart disease. And many of the doctors that are highlighted in this whole video series on a healthy lifestyle, they also believe that uh, cholesterol is not the culprit in heart disease that there's a lot more to the whole issue and there's a lot of new thinking on this whole subject. And uh, a lot of other people are saying just as, just as quickly that you've got to look at what oxidizing and, and um, free radical damage is going on in the body before you can assess uh, uh, really what's going on and what puts you at risk for heart disease, or stroke for that matter. We're talking about the cardiovascular system. Here's another doctor uh, that is uh, very much against statins, and he brings up another very important point, and that is that there are certain, um, I don't know you'd call them, uh, uh, certain uh, nutrients uh, most famous one is CoQ10. Uh, that should be taken uh, together with anyone that is taking statins, and I guess by now just about everybody knows that. But he believes that statins are a very bad idea and they cause a tremendous damage to one of our most important little organelles inside our cell, and that is the mitochondria. So remember the mitochondria are the little powerhouses and uh, Dr. Graveline, Graveline uh, believes that statins damage the mitochondria because some of the um, some of the enzymes that the statins target are the same enzymes that, that create other problems in the body. And he, he mentions another uh, uh, chemical or another nutrient or whatever you want to call it in the body called 
Dolok holes, and he believes that these are not very well known, but a very serious side effect of taking statins. Bottom line, he thinks statins cause memory loss, and he wouldn't recommend it for anyone under any circumstances. And I guess uh, uh, Stephanie Seneff would, would say the same thing. Under any circumstances, if it was the last thing in the world, they would still say, forget it. Um, now, if somebody is trying to reduce the amount of uh, cholesterol in their blood, uh, one thing to keep in mind, and it's, I think it's very important, and that is that if you're consuming, if, if your whole lifestyle is such that you have high triglycerides, you have to remember that the liver is making cholesterol as well and is packaging that as part of the cargo and as part of the shell. So, so uh, to the extent that this whole elevated level of triglycerides uh, is going on in the body, that's also driving the amount of cholesterol. So lifestyle can make a huge difference in cholesterol profiles if, uh, um, if you give lifestyle a chance and reduce the triglycerides. This is a, a Dr. J. Heineke that says that as far as he's concerned, the way that we test for cholesterol, the way that we test for LDL and VLDL and even HDL and all of these things, he questions the value of these, these numbers. Uh, the, 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 he questions the diagnostic value of these current methods to predict heart disease. And why is that? Because in, in his video presentation, he describes how he describes how even the good cholesterol, the HDL, uh, can can be damaged by oxidative stress. Uh, by damage, uh, he's talking about how the body uh, is assaulted by all of these compounds and chemicals in the blood and and inside the cells, and these um, these assaults uh, can degrade the 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 primary reason that uh, the HDL and the LDL were there in the first place. Um, some some researchers believe that cholesterol is actually. Uh, a part of the whole repair system and it's an antioxidant and some people believe that the HDL is you can almost liken it to part of our immune system in a sense that it's going to the site of the injury um, or the site of w some repair that's going on and it's gobbling up the cholesterol and 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 taking it back uh, for repackaging but uh, Dr. J. Heineke believes that a lot of these, a lot of these procedures in laboratories, where I guess they use uh, blenders and other mixing equipment and test equipment, uh, he's not so sure that that we're getting really accurate results uh, with all the procedures that we're using in conventional uh, medicine and conventional diagnostic laboratories. We haven't said uh, too much about uh, how to improve the function of your liver, but I want to include Dr. Sandra Cabbage. She's from Australia, and she says that the liver is the major fat-burning organ in the body. And uh, so, Corn, when you're thinking of of how, uh, uh, you know, if you go to a doctor and the doctor is saying, okay, we're going to help you lose weight and whatnot, 
uh, well, first of all, I, I really, I really would rather the doctor say that we're going to restore your whole metabolic function and the weight will take care of itself. So I'd like to hear that first. But uh, uh, going back to Dr. Sandra Cabot, she says that if you are uh, carrying some extra weight, some extra fat, that the liver is what will will help you burn that fat. So she's all into, and I guess her whole practice is all about the health of your liver. So it's a wonderful video to watch. Uh, she says that the liver is the organ of longevity. And the better you take care of your liver, that the longer you'll live. Uh, she also agrees to uh, avoid the sugars and excess alcohol and try to eat some of these raw foods uh, that I was talking about earlier, uh, such as the fermented vegetables. Um, I, don't, I can't remember if she uh, was or was not recommending dairy, but, uh, but in terms of dairy, I also believe that raw dairy from a, from a healthy uh, farm uh, and, a, and fermented dairy products would be the way to go. Uh, try, so, um, but anyway, she goes back to raw foods. Uh, she even says to get as much as 40% of your diet in, in, in raw foods. She's trying to help your body uh, use all the enzymes that are in all the raw foods. She says that the blood, um, it, it always is going through the liver to get cleaned. And, and uh, liver function and enzyme function is very important for that whole process. Uh, let's talk about uh, a, a new group of experts here that, that are, uh, are focused uh, a little bit on, uh, the, on metabolism, uh, metabolic health here. Um, a lot of people don't associate Alzheimer's disease with metabolic health, uh, but, um, but this whole notion of lifestyle and preventing Alzheimer's is, is very exciting and it's, it's wonderful news. Uh, I'm sure in the, well I know that I used to think that whether or not I was afflicted with Alzheimer's would be just you know the kind of the luck of the draw but you can really reduce all of your chances for this uh, according to Dr. David Perlmutter you can re reduce your chances by avoiding all these uh, re uh, processed and refined sugars and carbs you can consume the healthy fats you can make sure you get your your, your all your vitamins and your minerals and phytochemicals and whatnot, and uh, you can prevent uh, oxidizing your cholesterol, and you can get regular exercise. I want to go back to this notion of um, preventing oxidized uh, cholesterol. Remember, we have to separate what we, the, the, the cholesterol that we eat, and we also have to remember that the liver is making cholesterol. When, when we eat an animal product that has cholesterol in it, you want to make sure that you're not damaging that cholesterol that you're eating. You don't want to be eating oxidized cholesterol. Uh, a simple, uh, if it's, a, if it's a, a fish product and it's heavily fried and, and ex ex to extremely high uh, temperatures, uh, more likely than not, that cholesterol in that fish has been damaged. And those, uh, all those wonderful essential fatty acids and all that, maybe they look like that, and then suddenly they were just denatured. So, 
Uh, you want, uh, if it's an egg, and you fry an egg in uh, rancid oils, again, now you're, and you eat that, now you're taking in some oxidized cholesterol. And then if, you're, if your diet is such and your lifestyle is such that you have all these high triglycerides that are packaged up there with cholesterol that your liver probably made, because the, the liver has to package, it can't just send out triglycerides by itself. It's got to go with some, with some cholesterols. Certainly it's got to go in the shell and probably packages some on the inside uh, in every lipoprotein. But the point of it is, now that lipoprotein goes out in the bloodstream and that can be oxidized. That can be subject to free radical damage. Uh, so uh, you want to reduce the number of triglycerides that your liver is being forced to make uh, from your um, from your lifestyle. I say your lifestyle because it's not just what you eat. It's the, it's the amount of exercise, for example. The more, you're, the more you exercise and take care of your, your muscle, muscles, the more the muscles are going to be hungry for energy all the time. And even that will reduce the number of triglycerides floating around in your in your blood because the muscles will use that energy from the fats. Anyway, Dr. Perlmutter believes that nutrition and lifestyle determines who will suffer from a neurological deficit. And uh, he believes that if you avoid sugar, uh, which, in, which includes, in his definition, the bread and the pasta, uh, you can do a, a, go a long way uh, uh, to avoid Alzheimer's. And by the way, uh, Corn, you know that I eat uh, bread, but the only bread that I consume is only bread that has been fermented where the bugs, my affectionate, friendly bugs, uh, that's the yeast and the lactobacilli, there's all kinds of them in there, they're eating those sugars in the bread. And uh, I make that bread very sour, and a lot of those sugars are gone by the time I, I have this uh, delicious sourdough bread. But that's the reason uh, I only eat uh, sourdough bread. Whole grain, 100% sourdough bread with all the fiber. Uh, here's uh, Dr. Sherry Tenpenny. Uh, I included her here, Corn, because you may not know about her. Uh, she, she believes that uh, in terms of breast health, that thermography may be very helpful. Someone who's really good at, in, at interpreting the results can detect changes from one year to the next uh, related to breast tissue. And you can find things before they would ever show up on a mammogram. And she says that... Uh, uh, women should focus on the health of their breasts and avoid getting cancer in the first place. And, and that's why she's, she's such a fan of this uh, technology where it just takes a picture, it's not invasive or anything, and it doesn't expose you to x-rays also. Um, another lady I wanted to mention was Dr. Vicki Newman. She's down there in San Diego, and she believes that uh, longevity is living uh, in accordance with our with our whole uh, genetic makeup, and uh, she has a a couple of um, well she has many but uh, she she has uh, uh, many factors which she believes leads to uh, longevity, and I'm just going to read them off just in case again you don't have time to watch her video. Uh, she says, number one, she says, maintain a, a lean body mass. In other words, uh, exercise and, and make sure you've got good muscle mass versus the amount of fat that you have. 
she says to keep a physical active lifestyle and eat plenty of plant foods with a lot of color and a lot of strong flavors which she uh, likens to the nutritional value of these uh, plant foods. She says to focus on healthy fats and we've talked about the healthy fats quite a bit and she's, she warns to, to choose the carbohydrates uh, very wisely. Uh, the carbohydrates uh, would be all the, the grains and the, all that sort of thing. So she's uh, very judicious, very judicious in what type of carbohydrates she will or will not recommend that people eat and to select your beverages very carefully. The, uh, uh, she also talks about uh, at, uh, at, at times to, to go hungry. In other words, to, to uh, she doesn't talk about uh, GG the way I do, but this whole notion to experience the notion of hunger uh, be, before you before you uh, uh, immediately give in to it and, and go eat something. And she says the, the, the bottom line is to eat uh, real food, not too much, and mostly plants. Drink pure water, uh, eat slower, exercise, and practice uh, gratitude, as she puts it. So she has a lot of practical tips, and uh, I think uh, she's a, a, a person who's really thought a lot about longevity, and we're all interested in that, so there you go. Uh, Dr. Varkey, uh, he has, uh, he's dedicated his, uh, his practice, or his medical uh, focus now on, uh, on how um, I get well, how do I put this? He tries to understand human health by looking at the health of other animals and specifically the other uh, great apes, and uh, he explores the the whole genetic uh, approach to understanding human diseases, and he tries to look at how. Uh, our genes evolved over the years uh, to understand how the, this contributes to disease. Now he has a, a very, a very uh, interesting uh, hypothesis, and that is that, uh, and you'd have to watch the video and, uh, to 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 be. I'll just kind of summarize what I think, uh, at least what I got out of it, and that is that uh, a while back our lineage, the, the human lineage, uh, separated from the great ape uh, lineage and to the extent that humans these days eat uh, animal products and I think he, he highlights more the the, the, the mammals like the, the beef and the pig and that sort of thing that we're actually, we're actually um, allergic by definition to the meat of these other mammals. And remember a few minutes ago I was describing the surface of the, of the earth and with uh, craters and trees and and all kinds of structures. Well, uh, all those structures on the cells of animals like pigs and cows and goats and all that, on their cell surface, they have certain molecules. And Dr. Varkey believes that humans um, can have an allergic reaction, can have a, an immune response to those cells and what it meant to him was that he would be very careful in the type of animal foods that he ate because of that.
So, um, uh, for those who are uh, following a traditional diet or a, a paleo or a primal blueprint diet or whatnot, maybe this will come as somewhat a, of a surprise, but uh, Dark Deer uh, Varki traces all these evolutionary developments and is very interesting, uh, very entertaining, uh, a very entertaining lecture. And uh, he also says that uh, as far as his observations go, uh, a lot of the, a lot of the uh, uh, other uh, great apes, a lot of the other uh, primates, do not suffer the same type of diseases that uh, humans do. And he tries to explore and understand why that is the case. Dr. Mike Evans has a, has a discussion here about uh, uh, the health benefits of exercise, and it's a very quick, a very fast uh, video, but he says exercise is the best treatment for arthritis, preventing Alzheimer's, preventing diabetes, and many of the other chronic diseases. And uh, the, the more and more I understood about this whole business about exercise, that's why I said in a previous video that exercise is much more uh, exercise is much more than developing muscle mass or uh, maintaining uh, our weight or something like that. It's much more than all of that. Our whole genetic makeup, the way our whole hormones, uh, the sensitivity and uh, a metabolic function works is in sync, if you will, with movement because the muscle, the muscles in your body are using that energy that comes from our food. So I also mentioned earlier that all of this energy is coming from what, corn? You remember? It's coming from the sun. <laughs> now, like I said before, and this is uh, this is really important. The sun is shining down on Earth, and then uh, you you have all these leaves. Now, this is this is not a green leaf. I should have a green leaf here, but this is uh, it fall over here now. But anyway, um, so this whole leaf, the whole structure of it, everything came from sunlight, water, carbon dioxide, and some other minerals and things like that in the, in the soil. But the point of it is, we eat this, or we eat an animal that ate the plants, and uh, we have to manage this energy in our body. And Energy is, uh, one form of it, is the movement of electrons. And in our body, the movement of electrons is very important in terms of how enzymes work and how proteins work and how carbohydrates work and how, how all of these uh, uh, energy molecules, going back to whether it's uh, not octane, but going back to the triglycerides or the or or the sugar, uh, the glucose, uh, how we manage this energy coming into our body, and going back to Dr. Evans here, uh, he believes that exercising, moving, uh, making sure that our muscles and our heart and everything are are using this energy, is the key to preventing chronic diseases. Dr. Edward uh, Gorham has a, uh, a whole discussion about vitamin D uh, and he believes that getting your vitamin D from sunlight is the, is the way to go and he has a, um, basically uh, he has a, a suggestion that you get your vitamin D from uh, after 10 in the morning up until about 2 o'clock in the afternoon and do it for 15 or 20 minutes uh, as much as you can all over your body and uh, he goes into a very interesting explanation 
of how the ultraviolet A and the ultraviolet B, uh, these are the, uh, this is the radiation coming from the sun, uh, how, how the different um, wavelengths uh, either injure or help us and how they uh, are protective um, against uh, skin cancer, which he's very concerned about as well. And he basically says that uh, if you follow these guidelines on very clear, clear days, uh, at the right time of the uh, year or in the right place on earth uh, you'll be able to get the best source of vitamin D. Now vitamin D is so important and they're just learning more and more and more how important it is of cell-to-cell uh, -cell communication and and uh, how it affects uh, our, our uh, risk of coming down with all kinds of chronic diseases so uh, I cannot emphasize vitamin D enough. One day I even drove about 40 or 50 miles because I saw this beautiful patch of blue sky and I said, oh, I want to get some, that, some vitamin D from, from that crystal blue sky. And I, oh, I didn't think it would, I'd have to drive that far, but I just kept going and going trying to get on the other side of this cloud, so to speak, until I finally got to that uh, sunny spot and I stayed there for about, oh, I guess 30 or 40 minutes, uh, twisting my body around and trying to get as much vitamin D as I could, as I could pack up there for the day. Uh, of course, if you can't get it from sunlight, then you can uh, look for it, all the different foods on the internet where vitamin D can come from. And I, I wanted to just mention uh, this video by Mike Chang. And Mike Chang is a, is a fitness uh, instructor. And uh, <clears throat> he, has a, he has quite a nice uh, a graph that he's put together here about uh, visceral fat and all the problems. Uh, I guess he's just seen it uh, dealing with all the people that, that uh, he helps. Uh, in his work, and uh, as far as he's concerned, uh, it leads to die. Uh, this this whole business of of having this fat around the the, the the midsection, the way it wraps around your heart and wraps around the just you know the the, the liver and all that in there. <clears throat> he says that the belly fat, the it, which we call visceral fat, uh, leads to the diabetes. Uh, heart disease, cancer, stroke, arthritis, and and even uh, sexual uh, dysfunction. So he goes into an explanation of uh, what visceral fat is and and how to deal with it from a from a physical uh, fitness uh, perspective, which I thought was uh, was very helpful. Now, uh, <coughs> uh, Doctor. Doug McGuff uh, has uh, been one of the leading uh, experts in the field of what we call this high intensity exercises. And uh, he thinks that one can achieve optimal health, optimal health in just exercising uh, a few minutes uh, per week, per week. So. Uh, he would not uh, be agreeing with me to be exercising maybe an hour a day. In fact, he believes it's, uh, uh, it may even be uh, somewhat harmful. Uh, he thinks that if you, if you do this high intensity exercises, uh, it will help your heart and it will help your whole muscle structure. Uh, he says that he favors this type of high intensity, uh, he favors, he favors the high intensity exercises over aerobic and long endurance exercises, and <clears throat> he thinks that the best metabolic health will come when, uh, with the least strain that you put on your heart and your body. 
So it's a very interesting perspective on exercise. And I think I told you in uh, uh, the last time I did a video on this uh, whole subject um, about exercise, I was holding my hands and then I was going through, I think I, I made it to about uh, 13 or 14 minutes. I didn't count it exactly. Uh, but uh, in a future video, Corn, I'll let you, uh, you know, see down into the pool actually what I'm doing, but I'm kind of holding my hands. This is the version of a high intensity exercise that I'm doing right now, but Dr. McGuff would, uh, uh, he advocates uh, uh, just, uh, just a few minutes of burst training. And uh, he's having a tremendous impact. In this, uh, <clears throat> in this video, he was being interviewed by Dr. McCall again, and I say again because Dr. McCall just interviews all kinds of people. Wonder he has time to do anything else. He just finds all these fascinating uh, uh, professionals with this or that opinion of, of how we improved our health, and somehow he gets them on the phone or in person and he interviews them. And Dr. Doug McGuff is uh, one of those that uh, came under Dr. Mercola's radar and, and brought him brought him in for for an interview. So anyway, uh, <clears throat> Dr. Mercola says that he's changed his whole exercise structure. And I remember Mark Sisson, he said in one of his interviews that that he's adjusted adjusted his whole exercise routine to include this uh, high intensity burst training. I just wanted to say just one more thing about it as I understood what he said in his video. Again, I'm worried you won't take the time to watch it or you won't have the time. But he said that your muscles are divided into uh, different types of fibers. And if you don't use all of those fibers and especially the fibers that are used for this high intensity burst training, that it will, it will go to waste. And, uh, and you'll actually be really uh, losing an opportunity for health and damaging your body if you don't use these uh, muscle fibers. And he just doesn't think that these hours and hours of uh, swimming like I'm doing or, or uh, walking, uh, or not, not so much, he's, he's not down on exercising for an hour, he's, it's not that, he just thinks that that if you're really focusing on metabolic health, one should be participating in these high intensity uh, exercises. And uh, he, he also advises against putting unnecessary strain on your heart or your body with some of these exercise routines that other professionals are advocating.